Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us. My name is Russell Corris. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Easy365 and our newest initiative, Easy NFT. Specifically, we're here today to talk about Easy NFT's Genesis series called Renaissance 2.0, where we try to bridge the gap between the traditional physical world of art and the digital world of NFTs. Joining us today is one of the amazing artists on this drop, Nanu Burks, who I'm so honored to have as part of Renaissance 2.0. Nanu, thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be a part of this project. It's like everything that I've been wanting. So, <laughs> Thank you so much. So tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and your history so far as an artist to this point. Sure. So um, I've been in the blockchain space for about a decade. I've been making crypto art for uh, since 2014. I minted my first piece with help in 2014 because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but I've been a muralist since way before that, since I was a teenager and always advocating for freedom and decentralization. So, um, yeah, as an as a artist that makes things with my hands, it's, it's really interesting to be digital. And I've always like my mission has always been how do we bridge this world? So for me, it was bringing live painting into crypto conferences. That was like my first step into doing this. And now it's um, augmented reality with my physical pieces. And then, you know, connecting the NFTs as the augmented reality to the physical piece you can hold. So yeah, it's 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 amazing. I'm really grateful to be a part of this. Um, and yeah, I mostly use mixed media. I like taking old computer parts and, and using them and making these huge pieces, um, making like a, a base Bitcoin, you know, a base Bitcoin thing that I've been working on for a while as well, but a base I found in the trash. Like, you know, people send me, give me like all sorts of weird records that I make things with. So yeah, if I could just show you what's around me at all times, like bones and technology pieces and crystals, it's just, it's a fun place to be at. That's amazing. The piece you created for this drop, the the, uh, the highlight piece was 45 second incredible looping video and, and with so many elements to it, so many layers. I watch it almost every day. It gives me goosebumps. Uh, it, it's just such a phenomenal piece. Uh, uh, where did you come up with the inspiration for that? And, and what kind of message are you trying to convey? Yeah, so it was actually a perfect timing because I went Warhol like triggers me. I've, got, I've gone through an awesome connectionship in my mind with this human in my heart. So I used to not understand his approach. I think I was really triggered by the whole art becoming marketing. And now I realize that it really can't be fought or separated as much. Uh, and it's actually a beautiful thing that that now these two are blending to the point where we understand that graphic designers are artists and marketers are artists. And so, you know, we choose where to act from. So I was really triggered by that. And I'm like, this dude has a factory and he like, who is to say, but he's brilliant. Right. And and he saw something that he was a visionary and and like he would have loved the NFT space. So. Um, so, yeah. So um, the Maryland specifically, I've always had obviously an admiration for her and and just everything surrounding her magic and her power, right? Um, of course, like as a woman in general, but but I never really connected with with his works, his prints of her. And then um, through the journey I've been going through, I have been doing some version of that with with my work, right? Like I have been creating all of these copies across all these different places, but trying to make everyone unique. So for example, my BTC girl, which is one of my most well, well-known pieces um, about me being a girl and then a woman into the crypto space and dealing with being a woman in the tech space, you know, she was a print and a drawing and then and then she became a sculpture and then she became an AR enabled sculpture and an NFT. And so I have like, you know, 20 copies of these, but they're all originals. And so when I got the opportunity to work with this Maryland print, first of all, I was like already like, okay, I get it. Like, of course I needed to feel all this to be here now. Um, but yeah, it was powerful to be able to take this Maryland photo into another 10 million versions of her. I just, I'm running with his idea and like going further and I felt so inspired. So I basically, you know, gave her tattoos and I, um, I, I layered my art. I actually layered this piece, which I'm like, I love, I love this art piece. I love it because it was a mistake. Um, and it became one of my favorite art pieces that I've made in a very long time. I was playing with a new technique. You can't see it here, but in the sun, you can see I was playing with a new technique. I thought I ruined it. And then it turned out that it just needed four more layers. And now I'm very happy with it. It's super complex and there's a lot going on. Um, so this piece, I overlaid it. I put tattoos on her face and then I try to do as many uh, versions of her, you know, like the the saint, the the whore, the, the slut, the technologist, the pioneer. The, so the colors and the color therapy around it is supposed to represent all of that. And when she goes through the black and white faces, it's like the pristine angel, right? Like all these different 
um, projections that we put on people and that we put on women. And so that's what this piece is about. It's been like an incredible opportunity and just like an honor truly to be able to collaborate with him in some sense, you know, even if ethereally. Um, and yeah, and like to finally understand this, it's just been cool. So, and the music is provided by one of my friends. He's a really young, um, amazing artist out of Mexico. And he's been super generous, like just um, allowing me to purchase license uh, over some of his songs and be able to use it for a lot of different things. Um, so yeah, his last name is Rubio. That's what he goes by and Emmanuel Rubio and he's amazing. So I'm really grateful to be able to use his music as well.